Hi, welcome to this Corpomaz video on the combined mean. In this video, we're going to look at what the combined mean is and how to answer some typical questions involved in it. So first of all, what is the combined mean? Well, the mean in maths is an average, and it's the average found by adding up the values and dividing by the number of values. And we're going to be looking at the combined mean. So if we had two or three different groups and we had the means for each of them, how to find the mean for the whole lot, the whole collection? So let's have a look at a typical question. So here's our first question. So it says there are 40 houses in Greenville and 60 houses in Redville. And the mean number of cars per house in Greenville is 2. And the mean number of cars per house in Redville is equal to 3. And it says work out the mean number of cars per house in both villages. So in other words, the mean number of cars per house for all 100 houses. So what we're going to do is, first of all, let's consider what the mean is. So the mean is what we find when we add up the total number of values and divide by the number of values. So in other words, this mean of 2 in Greenville has been found by adding up the number of cars in each of the 40 houses and then dividing by 40. So if we multiply this 2 by 40, we will find the total number of cars in Greenville. So let's do that. So 40 multiplied by 2 is equal to 80. So that means there's 80 cars altogether in Greenville. Now, in Redville, well, the mean of 3 in Redville has been found by adding up the number of cars in each of the 60 houses in Redville and then dividing by 60. So if we do 60 multiplied by 3, we'll find the total number of cars in Redville. So 60 times 3 is 180. Now, if we add those two numbers together, the 80 cars in Greenville and the 180 cars in Redville, that will tell us how many cars are altogether in 100 houses. So when we add those together, we get 180 plus 80 is equal to 260. So the total number of cars in both villages is 260. So if we take that 260 and divide that by the number of values altogether, so that would have been our 100 houses, that will tell us the mean. So 260 divided by 100 will be equal to 2.6. So the mean number of cars per house is 2.6. Now some people, some students often ask me, well, sir, can you not just add together the two and the three and divide by two, you know, work out the mean of those two means? Well, if we look, there was 40 houses in Greenville and 60 houses in Redville. So it wouldn't have been fair to add them together and half it because there was more houses in Redville altogether. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says, there are 10 students in class one and 20 students in class two and all 30 students did a test. And the mean score for the students in class 1 was 80%, and the mean score for the students in class 2 was slightly lower, which was 70%. And the question says, work out the mean for all the students. So what we're going to do is, well, first of all, we know that the mean for the students in class 1 was equal to 80%. So if we multiply 80 by 10, the number of students, that will tell us the grand total. So if we take our 80 and we multiply that by 10, that will give us 800. Then, in for class 2, we know that the mean for class 2 was 70. Well, if we take our 70 and multiply that by the number of students in class 2, which was 20, that would tell us the total there, which was 1,400. So in other words, if we added up all those percentages for those students, the grand total of those would be 1,400. And if we add those two together, that would tell us the total percentage, or the total percentage marks, scored by all 30 students. So 800 plus 1,400 would be equal to 2,200. And then it says, work out the mean score for all the students. Well, that was the grand total. We're going to take our 2,200 and divide it by the number of students, which was 30. And when we do that, we get our mean for all the students. And our answer would be 73.3 recurring percent. And that was it. So as you can see, to find the combined mean, what we do is we multiply the mean for one of the groups by the number in that group. We times the mean in the other group by the number of students and the number of values in that group, and we add them together to get the grand total, and then divide by the total number of values. So let's have a look at our last example. And our last example is a little bit different. So this time we've been given that there's five year 10 students and 45 year 11 students, and they set a test. And the mean mark for the whole group, so all 50 students, is 70. And the mean mark for the year 11 students, the 45 year 11 students, is 72. And the question says, work out the mean mark for the year 10 students. So this time we've been given the mean for the whole group. So we've got five year 
10 students and 45 year 11 students. So there's 50 students altogether. And so that means if we multiply the mean 70 by 50, we'll find the total mark for all the students. So 70 multiplied by 50 is equal to 3,500. So there's 3,500 marks altogether. Now, the question says the mean mark for the year 11 students is 72. So there's 45 year 11 students and their mean mark is 72. So if we take our 72 and multiply that by 45, we'll find the total marks obtained by the year 11 students. So 72 multiplied by 45 is equal to 3,240 marks. So if we take away the number of marks that the year 11's got from the grand total, we'll see how many marks the year 10 students got. So if we do 3,500, take away 3,240, we get that's equal to 260. So the five year 10 students altogether scored 260 points. So if we divide their total by the number of students five, we'll see the mean mark for the year 10 students. So 260 divided by five is equal to 52. And so the mean for the year 10 students is 52. So if you're given a question where you're told the mean for the whole group, you can times that by the total number of students or the total number of numbers, and that will give you the grand total. Then you can take, if you know the mean for one of the smaller groups, you can times that by the number of numbers in that group and take them away to see the grand total for the other group, and then you can work out its mean.